Hey guys, welcome back to Vincefell Custom. So today we're going to do a little bit of a paint smudge repair on this Darth Talon head. Now as you can see over here, this is a little paint smudge going on. Uh, so it's kind of an easy fix, but it's a little bit of a tedious fix, and I'll explain why. Uh, so basically when you rub your finger over, it's a little bit rough, so if you actually hit it with paint, you're still going to see all that little roughness, so you got to smooth it down. So what I like to do is you know get my 3M sandpapers that I have these foam pieces and uh, extra pieces I cut off it's easy to kind of smooth it out so once I smooth it out I have to match the red that's kind of like the hardest part of the paint just matching this red because it's kind of almost like a reddish orange so I gotta kinda come up with a color uh, and then after that uh, when I spray here I'm gonna spray over the black because it's gonna I'm gonna have to smooth it out going across and then I gotta you know hit the black again so it's a little bit of a you know, matching the color and then masking some off. Uh, so basically what I do is I just take this uh, paper right here and just pretty much smooth it all out. Now, as something like this, you wouldn't really need to prime it all up because it's, uh, you know, a little bit of a spot and the, usually paint sticks to it pretty well. And since this is factory, you got to kind of get that little bit of a sheen glossiness because you can't use like a flat color and let this be flat and all this be sheen. So you want to rub your finger across, make sure it's all getting smoothed out. As you can see, I'm just going over the black too because there was some smudge going over there as well. So you just want to make sure you get this nice and smooth. And then once the stuff starts coming off, the resin or primer, depending on what type of statue it is, starts showing still not completely there you want to make sure you get a little bit of a rougher part too because it's easier to actually paint the red and then do the black than try to do the black and then hit the red so it's pretty much smoothed up uh, if for some odd reason you start hitting paint to it and you see there's a little bit of a switch and you didn't actually fine sand it, you got to just let that dry, hit it with a hair dryer, and then sand it back down. But it's feeling pretty good except for a little spot right here. Alright, so as you can see it's kind of like smoothed down now and we got this little bit of a resin part. I put my finger across it, feeling uh, smooth. So next step is it's a little bit of dusty, so you can use you know use your shirt, wipe it off. Sometimes I lick my finger and just kind of get any kind of dust off of it. So you, you use water too, whatever. You let that dry, and the next step is we'll go over to the booth and uh, we'll start uh, patching it up. Now what I'll probably do is when we come back, I'll have all of this masked off because you don't want to overspray going here. It's okay to overspray on the black because you're going to have to touch that all up. So what I'll probably do is mask this tentacle, mask that one off, and then we go really slow just masking up this, matching this color, and then we start, you know, going over with the black and all that. So, let's get it all masked up and we'll be back. Okay guys, so uh, we're going to start mixing up my colors. Now, this is kind of like a red-orange, so I can't really use Tamaya red out of the thing because it's going to be too red. And I really can't use this uh, Model Air light red. So, mixing the two colors together is almost going to give me the color I want. Now I know a lot of people probably say you shouldn't really be mixing brands and stuff, but usually I have no problem. Uh, so I just put a couple red in there, and then I'm just going to mix this up. And then what I like to do is like to put it over there, see how it kind of looks. Um, if I want to, I'll just hit it with a little bit of color, just to kind of see if it works and it's kind of getting close. Uh, might need a little bit more drops of the orange. So make sure this is all mixed up. The, the good thing about mixing like this color with the Tamaya, Tamaya is very thick and you usually kind of sometimes you need to thin it down. But I find that, you know, the watery uh, acrylics like these kind of help thin it down a little bit to go through an airbrush. So just kind of mix it up, make sure you get the color kind of close. If you feel that it's too orangey, you could kind of blend it back down. But it's kind of looking pretty close the color I want. Now I put that on there just to kind of see what it's looking like but what I do is I kind of wipe it off because it'll be too uh you know if it dries like that it'll be just a glob of paint but I'm just trying to get the color mixed so it's looking pretty good. Uh, what I like to do though at this point is 
I'll probably let this dry a little bit. I'll probably come back in about 20 minutes because when paint dries, it actually goes a little bit darker. So right now it's kind of looking a little bit brighter, but it's kind of looking close. So what I will do is just let this dry a little bit, hit it with a hair dryer, come back, and we'll start touching it up. So that's kind of how I like to, you know, mix up the colors and match them as close as possible. But like I said, once we paint it, it's going to be a little bit different than the other stuff. So I got to kind of paint it, touch up the black, and then what I like to do is hit it with some floor polish, kind of give it that factory sheen, and then tone it down a little bit with some flat coat. So it's kind of like a little bit of a process to get that factory look going compared to just touching it up and walking away. So there's a little bit of extra steps and everything, but that's how we do. So we're going to let this dry a little bit. We'll come back and we'll start touching it up. Alright guys, so we're back and we're pretty much ready to paint. I like the color match and everything, so this is what I like to do. It kind of, since I'm not priming this, sometimes if you put paint on a straight up resin, it kind of might bleed a little bit and cause some issues. So what I like to do is just take my hair dryer, heat it up a little, so this way when at least the paint hits it, it sets a little bit faster. It's a little trick I've been working on, so. Now you don't have to melt the hell out of it. Uh, just kind of heat it up, get a little bit warm. Alright, so it's a little bit warm, so I got my paint and my airbrush, make sure it's coming out okay. And then we just start slowly building it up. Now I don't want to overspray too much, so what I might do is take the hair dryer again, sort of dry that part up a little bit. Then I can kind of start going a little bit heavier, dry that up a little bit. So what I like to do is, I'll, not only did I hit there, hit a little bit over here, hit a little bit over here, just to kind of blend it a little bit more, just in case the color's a little bit off. And since we got all these little lines, the it'll just start uh, coming together. So it's, you still look at it, it's still a little bit there. And... Look at it real close, make sure we're not missing anything. A little bit of a spot over here. Like I said, we're gonna have to touch up the black anyway, so it's kinda easier. Yeah, I like to go a little bit thicker uh, since this is just a solid red and there's no shadowing in there and stuff. So I just want to make sure I'm getting it and getting it nice and thick and we're getting it as close as possible. You know, check, uh, you know, pop on brighter lights, check it around, make sure we're uh, looking pretty good. Got pretty close there. And the reason why I go a little bit thicker too is just in case uh, there is a little bit of a tiny indentation where it's kind of not flush. The extra paint with a little bit of thickness kind of helps even it out and flush it. Plus we're still going to gloss coat it anyway and get that factory look going. So, you know, even though as you can see I probably didn't even need that much paint and I really didn't need this much either. It's still kind of hard to keep on dropping and mixing the colors and it's easier to do it in there than to try to do it in a cup. Uh, sometimes I can do it in the cup for specific things, but red orange paint is kind of a pain sometimes. Uh, you want to make sure you didn't hit it with a too dark or too orange. And there we go. So uh, that's touched up there. So the next step is we let this stuff dry. I really don't want to mess with it. I don't want to touch with it. Even though I'm blow drying it, it's still semi-wet because I kind of sprayed a little thicker. So... Uh, just want to let this sit for like a couple hours or you know a little bit of time we'll take off the light so you can kind of see we kind of match it all up and then uh once that's kind of set come back we'll start doing the blacks now there's two ways of doing the blacks if you're uh, got a good hand and you can use a paintbrush and run with it you can do that or you can sit there and mask off all the red 
Uh, I'll probably be able to do it with the paintbrush since I didn't go too crazy over spraying. And I could kind of touch up some areas. But I got to find the correct black to work with this. Because there's this is kind of like a shiny black. But I don't want to use, you know, I got to figure out what kind of black I could kind of do. And run with it and go there. So uh, we'll let this sit. We'll come back and we'll finish it up. Okay, we're back. And at this point what I wanted to do was mask off the areas that had the overspray and that I sanded. Because I figured if I was to do a paintbrush, we would see paintbrush strokes and I didn't want to do that. So this masking, to get all this stuff to go, took about 20 minutes or so. But just to put on the black paint, it takes about like, you know, 30 seconds. So what I did is I got some uh, black paint here. This stuff uh, is pretty good. This kind of feels more like a factory type paint when you get it nice and smooth on. So I figured let me just use this paint to get that black and it's kind of close. So basically we just sit there touch up those areas now I've masked it off to the point where there's certain lines around here and here but those lines are actually didn't have any overspray so I didn't have to it's just these areas here where I sanded so basically we just gotta hit those areas we don't have to spray crazy just get them if uh, you feel that you miss anything just kind of I mean, you can go back in with a paintbrush too and everything and uh, touch up some edges. But we just want to get the main areas going. And that's it. See? So that took about, you know, like 30 seconds really. Whereas the masking could take about 20 minutes. So that's why I tell everybody, you know, when you paint, paint goes fast. It's the masking and prep work that takes the time. So if you take your time and you get the good masking and prep work, you can get a really good paint job and everything like that. So... I'm going to let this sit, we'll pull off the masking, and then we'll just fine uh, tune it up, and then it's ready to go. Okay guys, last step now is you just need some Pledge 4 Care finish and some Garage Kits Flat Top Coat. And basically it's real uh, easy, just try to, this is kind of how I found to get that like sheen from the factory. So what I like to do is just heat up the piece real quick, and then hit it with Future 4 Polish, and then uh you know flat top coat just to dull it down a little bit so just hit it like this future four polish now if you go very heavy you're going to get a super super gloss coat shine we don't want to do that we just want to get enough sheen there and a protective coat Alright, so we got that sheen going and it feels like it's all just one solid little piece. Uh, clean out the floor polish. We don't want that in the airbrush anymore. Get it out of there. And then uh, next step is just, uh, we don't want to go heavy with this, but we just want to get a little bit of a couple drops. And then sort of we just dull it back down a little bit. So we get a nice coat. And then there we go. So uh, that is it. We are all patched up. We got it as close as possible to the factory paint. And there's no more switch in the... So you can see the shine going all the way around the piece now. And there you go. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys liked the way it came out. And we'll see you next time with more repairs and customs.